Okay, welcome back. We're working our way through the Microsoft Official Academic Course Lab Manual, configuring Windows devices in preparation for exam 70-697. I do not own the rights to the lab book, or the lab manual, or the textbook. I am simply providing these videos for educational purposes to help students walk through these labs step by step. <clears throat> So in this video, we're going to be working our way through Lab 4, which is configuring Hyper-V. Um, in previous videos, I've been trying to break them down into the various exercises, but because of time, I'm going to go ahead and do this all in one video. So we're going to do all four of these exercises, actually five, including the lab challenge, within one video. I don't think it's going to take very much time. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we want to do is go on to CL1. Here's CL1. I want to log in. As a datum administrator. So we're going to do other user. empty this. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we want to go into our command prompt. Admin. So I'm going to right click here and so I don't see it. Depending on what version of Windows 10 you have, you may not have the um, command prompt here. It's not catastrophic. I'll just type in CMD. And you see we have administrator command prompt. I'm going to make this just a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. There we go. command to enable Hyper-V. We're going to type in DISM space forward slash online space forward slash enable yeah, I spell it right enable dash feature space forward slash feature name colon Microsoft dash Hyper dash V space forward slash all enter. Now, while we wait for this, I do want to show you where you can find it on most Windows machines. It doesn't come, <clears throat> Hyper-V doesn't come available on all Windows machines, but where you're going to find it is here. We're going to go into Apps and Features. Well, I'm not a fan of Windows 10. <sighs> go here, go into control panel. Programs. 
Programs and Features, and then turn Windows Features on or off. And if you walk through the setup videos, you're going to see where this is. So you can see we already have Hyper-V being added. So you can see it's been put on this machine. Of course, we have to restart our computer. That takes care of exercise 4.1. So now we get to go into exercise 4.2, which is creating and managing virtual machine. This is our computer reboot. Okay, now we've rebooted. I want to go back to the control panel. this to large icons, I can go into Administrator Tools. And then I want to double click Hyper-V Manager. Here, I want to right click new virtual machine. And then next, I'm going to call this VM1. Next, next, two zero four eight. Next. We're going to skip past this for now, just click on next. We're going to change this to 20. Next. The installation options, we're just going to click on next. And then finish. Okay, so now we have our first virtual machine. We can go down here and go into settings. Let's click on memory. We're going to adjust the memory. So we're going to change this to 1024. And then click on our processor. Change it from 1 to 2. Then we're going to go ahead and do OK. Now we're going to manage a virtual switch. So we're going to go to Virtual Switch Manager. We're going to create a private switch. Create. We're going to call this private switch. And then, OK. Now we're going to do another switch. We're going to do one for the internal. 
do internal create virtual switch internal switch and then apply Now this is an updated version of Hyper-B and you'll notice that we have a default switch already in here. What this default switch is, it's basically an internal switch that allows all of your virtual machines that you connect it to, to um, communicate with your live machine. So you don't necessarily have to create a separate internal switch anymore. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and do okay. Now we're going to go to our machine, which is down here in settings. Go into network adapter. When we click on our drop down, you can see we have our three switches. We want to go ahead and assign our private switch. And then OK. Now let's go ahead and create and manage a virtual Again, under settings, under our VM1, we're going to click on IDE controller 0. It's already selected as a hard drive, and we're going to click on add and new. Next. 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 Oops. Previous. Previous. I went too far ahead. This is going to be a one. Next. We're going to change this to ten, and then next and then finish. Now we actually want to edit this hard drive. I'm just going to click on edit. Next. We want to choose expand. Next. Change this to 15. Next. And then finish. And then okay. Now for the lab challenge, and this is really, really good practice. Whenever you get your initial image set up to where you need it, create a checkpoint. And I just right clicked on this. Right click and checkpoint. That's all I did. And now you'll see that we have a checkpoint right here. <clears throat> and that allows you to go back to that image. And then as I work my way through these labs, I try to create a checkpoint before I start the next lab. This way I'm not having to redo everything again. So I'm going to close out of this, minimize my CL1 open up my Hyper-V. As I click on my DC1, you can see where I've already created a checkpoint. I should have been doing this like all along, but I haven't been. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So checkpoint, checkpoint, see it doesn't take very long to do it.
again in case something happens I can always go back to that checkpoint image and go from there. Okay so we've completed all of our uh, lab four. That's the end of this video, the end of the lab. The next video we're going to start looking at lab five which is supporting mobility options.